Man, I thought this was supposed to be hip hop for Obama. Hip hop for Obama. Hip hop for Obama. You know, when I told people that after college I planned to become a community organizer and work in low-income neighborhoods, uh, most folks thought I was crazy. My mother and my grandparents thought I should go to law school. My friends had applied for jobs on Wall Street or had applied for graduate school. Uh, but I went ahead and I wrote uh, letters to every organization in the country that I could think of. Uh, and finally, this small group of churches on the far south side of Chicago wrote back and gave me a job organizing neighborhoods that had been devastated by the closing of steel plants back in the early 80s. Uh, the churches did not have a lot of money, so they offered me the, uh, the lordly sum of $12,000 a year uh, plus $1,000 to buy a car. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I bought this old beat up Honda Civic and I stuffed all my belongings in, in, uh, in the back and I got ready to move to Chicago, a place where I did not know a living soul. And even the people who didn't know me that well were skeptical about my decision. I remember having a conversation with an older man uh, that I'd met uh, before I was about to head out and I told him about my plans and he looked at me and he said, let me tell you something. You look like a nice, clean-cut young man. You got a nice voice. So let me give you a piece of advice. Give up this community organizing business. You can't change the world, and people won't appreciate you trying. What you should do is go into television broadcasting. Uh, I am telling you, you've got a future there. Now, I could have taken my mom's advice. I could have taken my grand parents' advice. I could have taken the path that my friends were traveling. Uh, and objectively speaking, you know, that TV thing might have made some sense. Uh, but I knew there was something in me that wanted to try for something big. And so I went uh, and started down a journey that leads me uh, before you here today. Now, this is harder than, it'll, than it sounds, uh, and it will be for all of you, uh, because with all the work that you've done and the organizations that you've been involved with, you've got boundless opportunities in front of you. And it's going to be easy for you to take the path that's already prescribed. It's going to be easy to forget about this progressive political stuff or to just write a check or participate uh, over the internet and go chasing after the big house and the large salary and the nice suits and all the things that our money culture says that you should buy and that should give you satisfaction. I hope uh, you don't get off that easy. You know, there's nothing wrong with making money, but focusing your life solely on making a buck shows a certain poverty of ambition. It asks too little of yourself, uh, and in the end, I suspect, will leave you unfulfilled. So don't let people talk you into doing the safe thing. Listen to what's inside you. I don't care what issues makes you passionate. Figure out what it is that drives you. Decide what it is that you care so much about that you're willing to risk it all. Next point comes from a lesson once I got to Chicago. Uh, I'd spent several weeks organizing our very first community meeting around the issues of gang violence that were plaguing this neighborhood uh, where I was working. And we had invited police, we had made phone calls, we went to churches, we passed out flyers. Uh, I had been warned of turf battles and bad politics between certain community leaders, but I was confident that uh, I knew what I was doing. So the night of the meeting, we arranged rows and rows of chairs in anticipation of the crowd. We waited, we waited. Finally, a group of older people showed up, uh, maybe 10 or 12 of them. They sat down. I'm feeling relieved. Finally, somebody's coming to my meeting. Uh, and uh, this little old lady raised her hand, and she says, uh, when does the bingo game start? And 
I had to tell them, well, this wasn't the bingo game, and they all got up and left. And eventually, we probably had, I think, eight people uh, sit in on this meeting. We had hundreds of chairs empty. Police commander never came like he had promised. It was a complete disaster. And later, the volunteers that I worked for told me that they were quitting. You know, that they'd been doing this for a couple of years before I'd gotten there and had nothing to show for it. And I was feeling tired, too, uh, and depressed and, and thinking maybe uh, I should have gone to graduate school right away after all. But at that point, I looked outside and I saw some young boys who were playing in a vacant lot across the street. And they're tossing some stones aimlessly at uh, a boarded up apartment building. And I turned to the volunteers and I asked them, yeah, before you quit, uh, you have to answer a question. Uh, what's going to happen to those boys? Who's going to fight for them if not us? Who's going to make sure that they've got a fair shot? And at that moment, I think we were all reminded of an important lesson for anybody who is willing to take on the world as it is, and that is that sometimes you've just got to persevere. Ma making your mark on the world is hard. If it were easy, everybody would do it. But it's not. It takes commitment. And you experience plenty of failure along the way. So the real test is not whether you avoid this failure because you won't. It's whether you let it harden you or shame you into inaction or whether instead you learn from it and choose to persevere. Yeah, don't stand up, stretch for the stars, get somebody else involved right next to you. Y'all elected me to keep it so fresh for you.